as I got into the individual cases, which earlier on I'd been discouraged from thinking about, um, it became apparent that these were honest citizens who perhaps had, on retirement, bought a, bought a you buy a post office, I'm not quite sure what the arrangements are. Um, people like um, Lord Arbuthnot's constituency, I think it's in Hampshire, you know, leafy, middle-class people, who suddenly, out of the blue, with no even suggestion that they had either themselves or any of their friends and relations been involved in anything dishonest, were suddenly um, ending up in court and being convicted. Um, mainly, I think, on grounds of false accounting, but in some cases of theft. And that just... I'd got all this evidence that everything was fine, that there was nothing wrong, that there had been an independent inquiry which actually told us um, that the post office was right. And yet, the people who were, as it were, going down were, were terribly honest citizens. I have to say, this is the thing that, that, that worried me. Um, you know, I've come from business and I'd also come from the civil service. And, you know, it's not, o you know, it's not only keeping the business going, it's, it, it's having a, an element of common sense and thinking about your staff. So that, so, so, so that was what worried me. But I didn't actually have any information to support my case until I had this meeting and Andrew Bridgen um, and Kevin Kavan uh, started to, you know, list some of these points. But that was my sort of road, road to Damascus, if you like, beginning to realise that there were quite small numbers. We were talking about, I think, about three, three or four MPs at that time who'd had these very unsatisfactory experiences with what I call Middle Britain.